Hey everybody, something new today. Uh, we have a clip from uh, a previous video, the video I did last week on the great legendary rock and roll icon Mark Farner, uh, the driving force of Grand Funk and of course his new band, uh, an American band. And uh, in the description I will put uh, links to his website as well as to the original video which is about an hour long. You should go and watch that. But today a clip on Mark Farner talking about his good friend and a guy he toured with, you may have heard of him, Ringo Starr. So enjoy the clip and then go back and watch the full video when you have time. Yeah, and then subscribe to my channel, The Drum Mission. And what's the name of that show that everybody's talking about? Musicians on Couches Drinking Coffee. Enjoy the clip. And then the other question that came to my mind is I watched a bunch of clips of you with Ringo from uh, a while back. And uh -huh. I if you uh, if you mentioned that you uh, you sold out sold it out faster than they did. <laughs> I didn't mention that, but I I knew that he knew that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody else had mentioned it to him. <laughs> but, but Ringo is a prince of a guy. He is, he is a cool guy. A real cool like guy. And he just got to the point with the fans where he couldn't take any more. He's got such a, a sense of responsibility. He just came right out and did a YouTube thing and said, don't send me anything else. I'm not right, signing right. another damn thing and all of this. Right. Uh, and that's really kind of how he was. Uh, and I, would, I wouldn't know. I mean, to be... Every time you turn around, even if he puts a hat and sunglasses on Glenn, he looks like Ringo with a ball cap and sunglasses. He just exactly. can't disguise himself. So um, I felt sorry for him with that uh, in mind. But when we got to when we got to Tokyo, I was uh, you know setting along this table where Ringo was sitting in the middle. We're doing a press conference. There's all these press people out in front of us and we are up on the podium with this long table with Ringo in the middle, kind of like the last supper, you know, right. with the, with the guys down the side. So this little gal comes up from one of the uh, magazines and she says, I would like to ask Mr. Farner a question. So I stand up and she said, what is it like playing with Beetle? And I said, well, let me tell you something, honey. Ringo puts his pants on one leg at a time, just like <laughs> I do. And he gets up, he stands up. Thank you, brother. He <laughs> comes over and he gives me a big hug. He's embracing me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. you know, that's just because I recognized him as being a man, just being like <laughs> yeah, one of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's that was really uh, a feather in my cap right then because that's how he wanted to be treated, you know? Right, like right. Everybody else. Uh, but in, in all of his writings that I read, that's what he talks about. Just being the, the, he loves being a musician, loves being the rock star, but he wants to be normal. You yeah. Know, and just to have that normal life. And uh, which he was very much denied. They all were. The, those, the four of them were stuck together. They were, you know, treated like heroes or gods in some way, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. They had a they had an anointing on them. Yes, they did. They did for sure. It's kind of like Elvis with that anointing he had. You know, it was time, and you could tell by you know the way things were happening and the speed that things uh, were happening for them and the acceptance and the screaming girls and you know you could tell. Right. 